We'll start this exercise with two assumptions. Assumption number one is that we're starting out with the empty new project database that was created within the previous exercise. Assumption number two is that you understand that data can always be entered by hand. Excel is certainly not required. We included this exercise because many Rockworks users already have data in Excel. Okay, let's start by first describing the Rockworks Borehole Data Manager. Each of these tabs, including location, orientation, lithology, stratigraphy, and so on, correspond to a table, much like a spreadsheet. The difference is that the tables are related to each other through a key field being the unique borehole ID. That's why they call it a relational database, as opposed to spreadsheets, which are called flat files. The Rockworks sample folder includes a sample Excel file titled Samples Training 01.xls. Load this file into Excel. This Excel file contains five sheets titled Location, Interval, Stratigraphy, Lithology, and Lith Type. Although Rockworks will allow you to import data from separate Excel files, it's very cumbersome and that's why we recommend keeping everything in one Excel file. Now, let's look at these sheets. The required fields within the Rockworks location table include a unique borehole name or ID, easting and northern coordinates for the XY location, elevations for the default reference elevation points, typically the ground or other reference point. The total depth representing the bottom hole depth below the reference point elevation in positive values. Think of this as distance from collar. This scheme accommodates boreholes that are drilled upwards from underground locations such as mines and tunnels. Other fields can be optionally imported into Rockworks, but for now, we'll limit this exercise to the important ones. The interval sheet contains quantitative interval-based data that will be imported into the Rockworks iData table. This is typically geochemistry or geotechnical measurements. The stratigraphy sheet contains the borehole IDs and stratigraphic contact depths. It's pretty much the same thing for lithology. Except we're also going to include the lithology types information, which defines the patterns, colors, and other information for the various lithotypes. Before we close this Excel file, we want to stress that there are far more types of data that can be imported, such as downhole geophysics, aquifer data, fracture data, and so on. This exercise is just a simplified example. So let's return to the Rockworks Borehole Manager and select the File, Import, Excel, Multiple Tables option. Given that it's possible to really screw up an existing database by overriding existing data with bad or poorly mapped data, the program will ask if you'd like to back up the database before proceeding with the import. Given that it's very easy to back up and restore databases, we recommend that you get in the habit of always backing up your data even though this sample database doesn't have any data yet. We're now ready to perform the actual import. Click on the yellow folder button adjacent to the import file name and select the Samples Training 01.xls Excel file from within the Samples folder. Click on the Next button 
to proceed to the next menu tab. The left column, labeled Block of Data to Import, contains a list of the Excel sheets. Whereas the column labeled RW Database Tables contains a list of the Rockworks tables that match the names of the Excel sheets. Now you may not have the luxury of Excel sheets whose names correspond so nicely. If such is the case, click on a Rockworks table and change it accordingly such that the data will be mapped to the proper database table. The next menu is very powerful and extremely useful because it allows us to import Excel data that is in different coordinates and units and to automatically convert this data to our project coordinates and units during the import process. Our sample Excel file, however, is in the same coordinates and units as our project, so we won't need to modify these settings. In this final step, we're mapping the individual location fields from the Excel location sheet to the location fields within the Rockworks database. As with the sheets and tables, we can click on a Rockworks location field and pick from the list of pre-existing fields. In fact, we can even add new fields to the Rockworks database on the fly and copy the designated Excel data to these new database records. Here's how. The Excel location sheet has a field named API whereas the Rockworks location table does not have an API field, so there's no place to map it to. Not to worry. Scroll to the top of the Rockworks locations field listing and select the item labeled New Field. Enter the appropriate information and press the OK button. The Excel field titled API will now be copied to the new Rockworks location field titled API. The borehole override options offer some additional flexibility when adding Excel data to a Rockworks database that already contains data. Skip existing record will not import any data if the borehole already exists in the database. Create new record will create a new borehole with a different ID if the borehole already exists. Replace existing record will delete the existing borehole data and replace it with the new data from the Excel file. Update existing record will let you specify the desired replacement methods for each borehole as conflicts are encountered. One last tip before we start the import. Notice the template file option at the base of the Excel import wizard dialog. If you anticipate a workflow in which you're repeatedly importing similar Excel files, the template file will save you the hassle of repeating the table and field mapping rigmarole each time. Okay, now let's click the finish button and start the import. Upon completion, you will be asked if you want to update the project dimensions based on the new data. Let's say yes and proceed to the next exercise.